We celebrate the revival of the Clone Wars on today's episode of Star Wars Battle Breakdown. In 22 ABY, seven weeks after the Battle of Geonosis, the Confederacy of Independent Systems targeted the resource-rich planet of Christophsis. A Separatist fleet moved in, landing an invasion force and blockading the planet. Although local resistance was somewhat effective at holding back the Separatist ground assault, they were not only quickly being overrun, but also running out of food and resources. Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker is tasked with breaking the blockade, which is led by Admiral Trench in his flagship, the Invincible. The Republic, who had received poor information about the size of the Separatist fleet, arrived with only three Venator cruisers and a trio of Pelta frigates carrying supplies. Trench's blockade, however, is comprised of over 30 ships, including his Providence Dreadnought, several Lucrehulk battleships, and of course Munificent frigates. The Republic's beginning assault is totally ineffective. Initially, Anakin attempts to charge through the blockade, but Obi-Wan jumps into system with his Star Destroyer, the Negotiator, and convinces the Jedi to regroup. And to be honest, that's probably for the best. They weren't anywhere close to being through the blockade, and they had already received serious damage. Luckily for the Republic, Trench orders the flotilla to maintain position, allowing the seven ships to escape. Obi-Wan reveals to Anakin that he has brought with him a new, state-of-the-art stealth ship. However, it is not to be used to fight the blockade itself. Anakin is sent on a relief mission to the planet, joined by Admiral Yularen, who has identified the presumed dead Admiral Trench as the leader of the blockade. As Anakin pushes towards the planet, Trench makes a move intended to pull the hidden Republic fleet out of hiding. He sends a squadron of hyena bombers to the planet's surface, which bomb the Resistance's position. As a note, before I explain what happens next, you should understand, when using a stealth ship, you cannot both use the stealth capabilities and fire your weapons at once. Anakin decloaks, firing torpedoes at the Invincible. Unfortunately, Trench has high-powered thermal shields, which protect the bridge from the assault. Anakin is barely able to recloak and avoid a barrage of incoming turbo lasers. In consultation with Obi-Wan, Skywalker realizes that Trench has some ability to track cloaked ships through their magnetic signatures. In the past, he's taken advantage of this through tracking torpedoes. Anakin fires a second set of torpedoes, forcing Trench to activate his shields and giving away his position. Once his ship has a lock on the stealth ship, Trench fires the tracking torpedoes. With a magnificent bit of flying, Anakin is able to outrun the torpedoes and run them straight into Trench's cruiser. The impact onto the bridge, disabling the Providence and seriously injuring Trench, who nonetheless somehow survives. This is one of Trench's two major mistakes. He was only vulnerable to attack here because he lowered his shields to fire the missiles at Anakin's stealth ship, and by the time he realized what was happening, it was too late for him to move and his shields were not recharged. His second major mistake was his misuse of his support fleet. He should have stayed within the blockade. That way there could have been dozens of ships firing at the stealth ship instead of just one. Also, he should have been more aggressive during the initial Republic attack. Yes, the Lucrehawks and the other large ships should have remained in position, but he had the Jedi on the ropes. He should have followed them with some of his munificent frigates. With the flagship down, Obi-Wan moves the fleet in towards the blockade. To be honest, I don't know how he's able to break through the still near 30 ships. I think most likely the fleet chooses a weak point and pierces the blockade there. Of course, not all Separatist ships are destroyed. The real purpose here was to land supplies on the planet's surface. The Jedi, several clone trooper groups, and heavy vehicles are able to reinforce the planet's surface, pushing back the Separatists until a secondary, larger fleet appears, mopping up any space forces and further reinforcing the ground. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Star Wars Battle Breakdown, and I hope you're as happy as I am that the Clone Wars is coming back. I can't wait to cover all the new content on this channel. And if you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you do, and if you want to watch every episode that I put out, and also catch the live streams like this morning's Republic at War stream, make sure you also click the notification bell. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been Eckhart Slatter. May the Force be with you.